Hi, today we're going to be taking a look at the top five boudoir poses of 2018 and how to keep your photographer from screwing them up. The pose is really the key to the success of the boudoir album. And over the past few years, I've seen clients using resources such as Instagram and Pinterest, and some of them send me whole folders full of posing ideas, uh, which is great, and it's a lot of fun to go in and try to do all these poses. But the downside of it is some of it can be difficult, and if it's not done in the right way, well, things don't end up looking exactly the way that you expected. You know, there's lots of photographers out there who really don't get these poses right and people can be a little disappointed or let down when they see the final result. So what we're going to do today is take a look at some of my favorite poses and I'm going to give you some tips to make sure that your photographer gets them done the right way. Okay, we're going to take a look at some of my favorite poses for 2018 and there really isn't any particular order here and I'm going to go over a few of the ways that photographers typically get these poses wrong. The Hangover. The Hangover has been around a really long time. It's been around since I've been doing boudoir and that's, that's pretty long. This pose is suitable for most body types and has a pretty low degree of difficulty. All you really need to do is lay square to the edge of the bed with your head hanging slightly over and you let your hair hang straight down. You know the key here is to make sure your hips and your shoulders are in line and another tip here is to be sure you are wearing the proper bra size because this is usually the part of a session where I find out when people aren't. There's quite a few variations of this pose, uh, one of which you can bring your arm up into your hair and moving your arms around and you can also twist your head a bit from side to side. Here we have another version of this pose using the hands in the hair. This is a really fun pose. I uh, still do this all the time. And uh, there's a few things you need to look out for here though. And one of which is letting your head hang too far over the edge of the bed. And you know, this can create a situation where your eyes are rolling into the back of your head. And that's just really not a cute look for this type of photo. And unfortunately, it's something I see um, all the time. And another big fail here is photographers who don't get the proper body position and the hips are in the shoulders and everything aren't square and the hand position isn't uh, quite what it should be. And again, these are just little things, but when you see the final result, it really can change the impact of the photo. The AAHD, or maybe a little bit more explicitly known as the ass up, head down, it's another pose that has been coming on super strong over the past couple years and is very sultry and suggestive. The one caveat here is that this is a pose that is definitely not suitable for everybody and every body type. However, I put it in here just because of the high number of requests that I get to do this and it seems to be growing in popularity um, year over year. You know, if you got a great booty, this is definitely the shot for you. Um, requirement I think for this pose to look successful is you need a bit of a limber body and this is definitely the payoff shot for those of you who have been putting in the gym time or the time in the yoga studio and this is one shot where you really can show off your assets so to speak. You now there's quite a few variations on this uh, including you can stretch your arms out in front of your body um, you know, twisting your head a little bit from side to side, and this is a version on screen now that has a little bit of a fishnets in here, a little bit of a, uh, of a different look. And here again we see a little bit of a different version for a more straight ahead, arms stretched out and eyes closed here, giving the pose a little bit of a, of a different vibe. and. How your photographer will screw this up and the ways are very numerous. This is a real difficult pose to capture properly. Um, there's lots of ways he or she is going to screw this up including improper body position, 
having your body at the wrong angle photographing you at the wrong angle and with this one it is really tricky because just a bit of a twist to the left or the right it gives it a really uh, different kind of a look also another big screw up I see in this photo or something you have to look out for is that the client's face is not relaxed and, and comfortable if they are straining or, or you know it, it just ruins the whole look of the uh, of the shot another one here you want to look out for is is you're not wearing the uh, the best undies for this type of a shot I think this really works best with a thong or a, a g-string uh, additionally, you know, the photographer will really mess this up and there are many opportunities for depth of field issues here, not getting the focus right or, or focusing on an area that isn't really the, uh, the center of attention in the picture. This one is really rather challenging to get correct with the right sort of blend of suggestiveness in it without really going too far. The lay down side shot. The side shot is a newer shot that I developed or invented. I don't really know if that's true or not, but which looks great and is suitable for most body types and has been a huge hit and found its way into many of my customer albums over the past couple of years. I think part of the reason is because this shot has a low difficulty. It has lots of options and the clients just really, they really seem to love it. This is a pose that can be both demure and sultry uh, depending on how you sort of uh, frame it. Um, it could be shot in jeans, it could just be shot in the undies. And again, as I stated, there's tons of variations that you can do here. You know, you can put the hands down and go for a little bit of a plunge, as you see on the screen now. You can use the arms again to pull out on the undies a little bit, which again is a really cute and kind of a flirty look. And also this is a great shot for accessories and uh, we have a version up here uh, now showing how some uh, ice cubes were used in this uh, photo. So uh, it goes to show you the versatility of this shot and, uh, and how much fun it is to do for uh, clients. How your photographer will screw this one up well this one has a lot to do with the posing of the hands making sure your hands are in the right position framing is everything on this shot and having them get the right bits in the photo that need to be in the photo and also the photographer will use improper depth of field on this one again which will not make it look quite the way it should the legs up the legs up is another hugely requested shot from my clients over the past few years and it has been a perennial favorite for as long as I can remember. This is another shot that you definitely must be including in your album and really for good reason. It's sexy, it's suggestive, it's dramatic, and most importantly I think it's really simple to do. Um, really all that's involved is scooching your butt up as close as you can to the headboard getting your legs up there in the air and ta-da there you go you have this uh, pose and it's about as difficult as that so the ease of use or the ease of posing on this one really makes it suitable for just about everybody it has tons and tons of variations that you can do you can alternate the positions of the legs a little bit you can alternate arm positions uh, putting the arms from side to side you can get the arms up on top of the head I do a version of this shot where we zoom in a little bit and focus on a wedding or engagement ring which gives it a whole different sort of a feel um, so this is one of the ones that I would definitely say when you go in for your session make sure this gets included in your album in some way shape or form how your photographer will screw this up again this pose really has its pitfalls for photographers and it is not really the easiest for them to get correct despite how easy it may be for you to get in the proper pose this one is all about leg position and one wrong move here and this, po this pose really takes on a very awkward kind of a look and doesn't look right additionally i see photographers all the time screwing this one up when it comes to depth of field and uh, it just really doesn't look the way that it should and finally we get to the crossbody 
The crossbody has seemingly stormed to the front of at least my posing universe over the past year or so, and I think for really good reason. It doesn't involve any treacherous posing gymnastics, and the results are really total sensuality. Um, not only that, there are, this is another pose again, which has tons of variations, and it is again really suitable for most every body type. I think now everybody needs a version of this pose in their album. It is super simple to do. Really all you need to do is recline in the bed and that's about as difficult as it gets. I do this pose all the time with different hand and leg variations uh, as including using the arms up under the chest as you see here. You can move your arms up on the side of the head. You could put your hands down on the thighs and like I said the versions you can do of this go on and on and on. There is one version I do of this pose with all my wedding or engagement shots. You can see here again where the focus is on the ring. We put a big nice smile in the picture and this is one that is perennially perennially again a a client favorite and this is a shot you know that has a super uh, big impact. How your photographer will screw this one up? Well, I like to look at this pose like pizza. It's a real simple product, but few people really make it well. It's an easy pose for the client, but this is one that is really fairly difficult for the photographer. Lighting, body position, and again, our old friend focal length are really three crucial elements that you need to have aligned in order to get this shot to look right. And I see people trying to do this where they just crop the person's head wrong, or they cut it off completely, or the hands are not posed properly, or their depth of field is too deep, and they're just not focusing on the right port, uh, part of the photo. The points of failure here are numerous for unskilled uh, photographers and again if this is a shot that is done incorrectly it just really looks awkward and it really loses a lot of the impact um, um, when done improperly and there you go so those are some of my favorite boudoir poses for 2018 and if you made it through this whole video i think what you can see is that really within this basic core of a couple poses the variations are seemingly endless and many of these are client favorites which will perform strongly you know for the next several years and i really want you to go out and try to include a good selection of these poses in your session as well as, as well as their variations because they're a really great foundation for a strong uh, boudoir album and as always once you have the basics completed you know boudoir is always about having a bit of fun and experiment improvise and try to come up with your own poses and uh, you'll have a great time doing it and it's really a a memorable uh, occasion so thanks for taking a moment to see my video and hopefully this will help you out a little bit on your boudoir session and as always i'm really here for you so if you have any questions stop by my website or leave a comment below and i'm always happy to hear from you and i'm here to help you out